name is Jeffrey Cannon, and you're listening to a podcast from digitaloilandgas.com. This podcast is entitled Blockchain, Facing Up to the Risks for Oil and Gas. Blockchain looks like it will have lots of potential in oil and gas, but what are the risks and barriers that need to be surmounted to move from hype to reality? I recently spent a week meeting with some of Europe's leading oil and gas companies on blockchain applications in the industry, and risk was high on the agenda. I mean, what can possibly go wrong? Well, oil and gas industry professionals tend to equate blockchain with Bitcoin, which is thoroughly understandable, given how much conventional and business press has been given over to the stellar rise and collapse in Bitcoin value. However, after a few minutes of discovery and exploration of the possibilities of blockchain technology, distinct from the single use case of Bitcoin, most oil and gas audiences surface plenty of intriguing blockchain potential. But they also surface the risks. The fun and challenging part of working with big oil on any change initiative, particularly one that is based on a new technology, is that industry professionals want to know what could go wrong. This isn't meant to be critical. Frankly, a bit more of that kind of thing could have helped out in the Gulf of Mexico a few years ago. But I thought I'd just play back some of the questions posed to me about risk and my thoughts on them. First on governance. Oil and gas companies don't like arbitrary and unexpected changes to technologies, regulations, business terms, contracts, and so on. Change creates risk for an industry that can't react quickly. The industry worries about who controls change to blockchain protocols, such as the number of transactions in a block, or the mining time cycle, or the compensation model for miners. For the most part, blockchain governance is still either opaque, immature, or subject to the whims of its founders. The bun fight within the Bitcoin community over block size, Bitcoin purists want to stay with the smaller block size, whereas some innovators seek a larger block size, reflected poorly on the maturity of governance over Bitcoin, and raised questions about governance over other blockchain innovations, which causes alarm in the cautious world of oil and gas. I didn't have a good answer to this challenge, and so I put that back to the blockchain app and protocol founders. You need to think about how you will manage change to your uh, protocol, app, cryptocurrency, and business. Take a page from the technology industry, provide plenty of notice, and engage with those reliant on your technology solution. Next key risk was around scalability. The industry worries about technological scalability. The media reports that there are sometimes 10 to 20 minute delays to process transactions on some blockchain implementations, and that the response time can degrade with greater volume. The playful CryptoKitties project on Ethereum is one such red flag. Performance of the Ethereum system slowed precipitously with the added volume on the network. For comparison, the Bitcoin system processes 2,000 transactions every 10 minutes, or 3 transactions a second, compared to 750 transactions a second at Western Union, and 250,000 transactions a second on the Visa network. Being used to running at their own pace and using their own systems, oil and gas gets fidgety about these kinds of scalability issues. Of course, blockchain developers are acutely aware of these performance worries and are actively experimenting with newer protocols that are rapidly improving transaction throughput. <clears throat> Over time, we should see the same kind of exponential improvement that characterizes other digital technologies. And in any case, business solutions on blockchain, such as smart contracts, will likely not need the same throughput as the large global payment systems like Visa. Third risk is around longevity. Oil and gas capital lasts about 20 to 40 years. A quick visit to investing.com and their crypto page shows some 1,400 cryptocurrencies or tokens. It's not clear how many will be around that long, but some will merge, others will decline in use, and some will ultimately go under. Recovery of one's investment, not just in lost token value, but in any installed blockchain applications, is uncertain. But with so many cryptocurrencies in circulation, it's clear that someone is going to lose their shirt when these coins fail to make a return or go bust. The mooted Petro, the cryptocurrency that Venezuela thinks it can launch to circumvent U.S. sanctions and currency controls, falls into this bucket of crypto with an uncertain future. In my view, the spread of cryptocurrencies is not a good reason to ignore blockchain. Companies should still try to carry out small trials to learn how blockchain behaves, which will help minimize any regret capital in apps and cryptocurrency. Next issue is, and risk is sustainability. Oil and gas companies are very sensitive to their carbon footprint, and getting involved in a technology with an energy profile that potentially shows unlimited carbon growth is counter to a low-carbon agenda. Bitcoin and similar variations are well known to be energy intense, and the Bitcoin world has come under alarmist pressed scrutiny about the amount of energy being used to mine Bitcoin. 
A few analysts think a simple linear growth progression from today points to Bitcoin mining eventually becoming the single largest energy use in the world. However, the Bitcoin design anticipated that the supply and demand for mining would temper the number of miners, and there would potentially be a consolidation in the number of miners. Fortunately, oil and gas will be happy to learn that other blockchain designs and protocols, aside from Bitcoin, are dramatically less energy intense. Indeed, an interesting study someone may wish to carry out is to baseline the carbon intensity of, an exi of the existing industry process and what the intensity would be under blockchain. I'm pretty sure we'll be pleasantly surprised by the result. Next is privacy. Oil and gas risk professionals are alarmed about a distributed ledger that has data from multiple oil companies on it. This has the whiff of collusion and antitrust behavior that distresses oil and gas executives. If the data on a blockchain can be hacked or privacy can be compromised, then blockchain for the industry is a non-starter. The number of thefts of Bitcoin and the value of the thefts is also troubling because it implies that privacy can be compromised. But then again, blockchain is based on the strongest known encryption technologies. And while it's theoretically possible to hack into the encryption algorithm, the thefts of Bitcoin are actually due to hackers breaking into exchanges where people keep their private keys for their Bitcoin holdings, or they've used classic phishing and spoofing attacks to seal a personal identifier and encryption keys. Businesses' use of blockchain for things like smart contracts will likely be on private blockchains that will be both encrypted and not publicly accessible, which will help make them considerably less vulnerable to attack. Next risk is interoperability. It doesn't take long for oil and gas to conclude that they will likely be in a world of multiple blockchain players, including Ripple, Hyperledger, and Ethereum, and multiple configurations, private, hybrid, and public, and for many different purposes, contracts, assets, and property, and so will their suppliers and stakeholders. Right away, they can anticipate that their suppliers will have to deal with multiple blockchain solutions. And therefore, how blockchains will work together becomes really important. A smart contract on Hyperledger may trigger a clause for an asset transfer that takes place on another blockchain ledger on a different protocol and payment on a third, meaning three blockchain solutions may need to interact with each other. As with scalability, the blockchain developer community is very aware of the need to resolve interoperability and have several committees, projects, and new solutions at work on this problem under such names as the Blockchain Interoperability Alliance, Cosmos, and Polkadot. Next is volatility. Oil and gas companies have a difficult enough time managing the volatility of fiat currencies and oil prices, and adding new cryptocurrencies with a lot more volatility than normal, and that lack transparent markets, hedging instruments, futures, and derivatives, does not inspire confidence. It's inevitable, and probably a certainty, that somewhere someone is already transacting for oil and gas using cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin. It might sidestep currency controls, masks the buyers and sellers, and gets around sanctions. While it is a matter of company policy if a cryptocurrency is accepted as tender, oil and gas companies should anticipate that sometime soon, a reputable player will ask to settle in a cryptocurrency. It's probably time to get familiar with crypto behavior and learn to manage its risk. Next is the regulatory challenges. Oil and gas is probably the most regulated industry on earth, but governments are still trying to find their way in regulating Bitcoin. Countries are banning Bitcoin mining and exchanges, limiting funding to mining companies, and so forth. Regulations are fluid. Know your customer rules and anti-money laundering rules are becoming more common. And most, if not all, of this activity is focused on the role of Bitcoin as a replacement for fiat currency. Well, the great bulk of beneficial blockchain applications in oil and gas, involving assets, trust, ownership, contracts, and identities, need not incorporate money at all, and may not necessitate much regulatory oversight. For instance, a blockchain solution aimed at tracking critical spares across multiple oil companies in a single basin will not likely trigger any additional regulatory issues. Next is data quality. What if poor quality data was encoded on a blockchain? Oil and gas companies are quick to point out that once on the chain, forever on the chain. Blockchain is just another kind of database, so business will need to still govern the accuracy of initially entered data as making changes to the blockchain is not possible. Well, technically this is true. Data cannot be overwritten, unlike in a traditional database. But a second data record that supersedes the first could be added to the chain, effectively correcting the data. Similarly, incorrect data could be put on the blockchain that supersedes the original data. The difference between a traditional database and a distributed database is that all parties need to agree the change, which reduces the probability that poor data gets on the chain in the first place. Still, 
businesses need to put into place good controls around blockchain systems to minimize data issues. So what's the bottom line? Well, blockchain technology is not without its risks. I suggest you give your blockchain innovation a road test with your auditors and risk management professionals. They're the best at asking those awkward questions about what, what could possibly go wrong and how to protect you from any downside. You have been listening to a podcast from digitaloilgas.com. If you like what you've heard, please subscribe to future installments and visit us at digitaloilgas.com.